Hey guys, okay, so finally, this is just gonna be like a boring swatching video um, because I'm finally gonna play with my Turner Artists watercolor Japanesque, Japanese-esque, Japanesque watercolors that I purchased. Um, I had originally seen these on the Turner official Twitter and from what I understand, these are like limited edition. They only made so many copies you make copies of watercolor they only made so many of these little box sets of the japanesque watercolors and i'm finally have the time we're just going to play with them we're going to try them out today um i have used the turner acrylic gouache many many times but i've never actually used their watercolors before but these come in cute little they look muted in the box i'm not that familiar with japanese colors to know if these are in fact like a Japanesque type theme. I mean, of course they are, but I just like them because they're muted looking. Look, like pale wisteria, that is totally a me color. All of these look super cute. So I want to swatch these out and see what they look like. Um, and I'm going to swatch them in the sketchbook that I've been using for all of my artworks. Again, this is the Strathmore Mixed Media Sketchbook in tan. And then I'm just gonna swatch them on white watercolor paper as well, just to see what the difference is. So um, I'm gonna get some water and get my brushes ready, and then we'll just start doing this. Let's do this. So with my luck, by the time the Christmas season gets here, these will be available on some sort of Western market. I'm in North America, so, um, but I did purchase these from Amazon Japan and they actually got here really quickly. They got to me within three days and they didn't cost that much. I think after shipping and handling, I only paid like 32 American dollars for these. So that was very exciting. Oh, that's already pretty. This is charcoal. I'm gonna try and do this like one sketchbook and then the other sketchbook and I'm just gonna swatch them straight from the tube. It's already very watery right out of the tube. Very little paint, lots and lots of pigment. Um, I have another charcoal watercolor that I use a lot um, by um, Art Philosophy. It's actually in my, my primary. Maybe one day I need to do some sort of like a palette study. But the art philosophy, like uh, what's it called? Art philosophy, watercolor confections, the vintage pastel set is one of my favorite. I use it a lot, but they have a charcoal color too. And I use that color probably almost more than anything else. So it's kind of fun having another charcoal color. Um, the art philosophy brands, I think they kind of get a little bit of flat because they're just cheap and they're chalky. But I kind of like the cheap and chalky. So charcoal already. That's pretty. So let's go to the next color. Turmeric or, or turmeric, depending on where you are from. I don't use a lot of yellows but this is kind of an orangey yellow that might be a winner actually you know what? i think i'm gonna like that one a whole lot too so obviously from my other artworks in the past in my history i do a lot of disney inspired big cats like lions and tigers and um, I'm always on the lookout for like the perfect orangey, like peachy color to paint my tigers and my lions with. And it usually involves a lot of uh, color mixing. And then sometimes it's, it's it, totally a shock to me if I'm actually successful and I have ruined paintings before trying to find the perfect orangey color. And you think I would have done it enough by this point in time, but I haven't. So. I don't know. It is it's very mustardy, very mustard looking, but that could be like a good, like a good Mufasa color so far. So that was the turmeric. I'm going to do the wine red. Yep, yeah, that's wine red. 
I don't have a lot of space on camera, so I'm doing one over here and one over here at the same time, but I'll compare both when I'm all done. Cinnabar. I have high hopes for this one. Yeah, I like that one too. But also, I feel like the turmeric color and then cinnabar color together, those two could make interesting shadow combinations. I'm not educated enough about art stuff to know all of these terminologies. I just generally throw color at a page and hope for the best. Clove. I like it just because it's called clove. How many watercolor sets or just paint sets in general do you find with these names? I love it. Don't know how well this is going to show up on the page. These colors are actually reminding me a little bit of like the 1970s in America, what I think of, of like a kitchen in 1970s America. Not that I was alive then. So that's kind of similar to the um, Arteza uh, swatching that I did. When I did the Arteza pastel palette, and there was this tan color in there, and that's kind of reminding me of that. So not bad. Go sprout. Wonder if this could be like compost green, maybe. It's a minty type of green. So that one, I mean, it's not dry. Oops, where's my camera? It's not dry yet, but that's the sprout green. And what that kind of reminds me of is I have in here too. So that green, I don't want to like ruin my swatch by flipping the page over, but it kind of reminds me of the green the lamb's ear. So this was the Sui gouache. It was a Korean gouache brand. It was a pastel set as well. And this is kind of like a watercolor version of that. I like that. Um, I'm, hmm. Again, I don't generally use that much green, but I do like it. It's pretty inspiring. All right. Now the next one, it's moss. That's an ugly green. Somebody out there would be going, yes, an ugly green. I love it. Oh my gosh. When I was a kid, me and my sister would call this poop green. It's very much so. Ugh. I, now I can see why people would think ugly colors are pretty sometimes, so I do get it, and I can see why that would be useful, but technically it's still ugly. Oh, and not another green, so we're going to do evergreen. I don't have anything to say about that one. It's a pretty green. It reminds me of Christmas. Like, that would be good for, like, a Christmas tree. That is probably a green I will never use. Oh, fresh water. Whoa, that's a um, very, I like that too. That's like a pretty vintage baby blue color. That's um, very vibrant compared to everything else we've just swatched so far. Deep Indigo. No, I don't like Deep Indigo. This is not a color that I would use. I would see why other people again would use it, but not in my color palette. That is not something that I would, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just personally not a color that I would be interested in. Now, Pale Wisteria. This is a color that I'm interested in. You know, I only have two colors left because I don't know how to count. I'm going to go out of order, so I'm going to do one up here and one down here. 
so I can keep it to two rows so I don't have just two random swatches over here. The thing with um, these pastel purple colors, I have like an addiction to pastel colors. My brain is just automatically drawn to them. I have like no control over it, even if it's something that I don't regularly use. But if I am testing out a brand new art supply, or if I see an art supply that I don't even plan on using, I just see it. If it comes in a pastel purple or like a mint green, I want it and I need it and my brain tells me that I have to have it. And then I never end up using them. So probably the most commonly owned art supply, like the colors that I have, it's gonna be a lilac or a lavender and then some sort of like a mint pastel type of green. Um, I should probably really do something with these colors. So they're like my favorite, favorite colors. Um, love it. I'd decorate my entire house in it if I could. And then we got one more. Purple, purple Gromwell. Let's see. Uh, no, not for me either. Too dark, not um, pastel -y enough for me not grungy enough for me i don't really like these type of i don't know what to call them like they're like the whole colors <laughs> again i'm sorry i don't know the i'm not educated on art at all um but like the issue with the purple gromwell and like the deep indigo um, i don't like these in the acrylic gouache or regular gouache either because i don't like that type of transparency that they have um, that's a feature that other people would like I don't I really do like things that are kind of a chalky type of look to them so I think this set is really pretty I wonder if there's any sort of in here oh shoot I've got the oh there are so I was looking to see I should have done this first but like the light fast ratings are so the box does have, of course, I can't read Japanese. It didn't come with any sort of a pamphlet or any, anything, but this is obviously a light fast rating system. And for the most part, they're all three stars. Which one is the one star, right? So the wine red is only a single star on the light fastness scale. But I'm not a professional. And I don't plan on having anything in a museum for hundreds of years. But the tubes do tell you, which is really nice as well. You know, it's got the pigment information and it has the light fast rating on the tube as well. So all that's all fine and dandy if that's something that you guys are interested in. But just to compare... They're still drying, but this is on the tan paper and this is on the white paper. It does, it has a very vintage-y look to me. This reminds me of something like what my grandma would have had ages ago, decades ago. So I like that kind of look. I like that style. Um, so very pretty. Um, what I'm most excited about is the charcoal color. The cinnabar and then the the turmeric of course i love anything lavender so that's pretty as well um i wonder if i should just let this dry because actually this the purple that i said that i didn't like is starting to dry now and I, i'm actually starting to think that's kind of pretty this blue is really pretty and this green is really pretty these remind me definitely of the suey gouache set let me pull that out None of my colors are in the box anymore. I pulled them all out, but this was available. This was a nice gouache set. I did a TikTok on it ages ago, and it was like, a, they're vintage pastel colors, which again, is something that I love. And that's what, that's what these two remind me of. So I really like this. I think whenever I move, I may need to redo my entire palette completely. And I would put some of these in my main palette maybe. Anywho, what I might try to do, um, I don't know if I want to do like a quick little fun little doodle just on purpose to use these. Um, so I might try to do some vintage-y looking pumpkins maybe. 
uh, just to quickly experiment with these. We'll, we'll see. Um, I've been wanting to do pumpkins anyway because it's the holiday season and I haven't really done anything fallish and these look very fall colored. So let's see, we got these all swatched out. I think it's pretty, I think it was worth the $30. And uh, let's see if we can do something with this real quick. Okay, so I lied when I said we'd probably just do simple pumpkins or something. I ended up going the leaf route and then I got a little carried away because I couldn't not throw a kitty cat in there. But I did think that this color palette was like a good fall color palette. I thought that most of these would make for like good like leafy greens, right? So that's what I ended up doing. I think I used pretty much every single color. I used the charcoal for the the cat. Um, his pink nose, that is from my traditional pastel watercolor set because um, I don't think I could have really mixed a pink. But I did do some wine red a little bit to make it darker. But I used like all the other colors everywhere else in the leaves with a ton of colored pencils. Um, so overall, I mean, this was my first time using Turner watercolors, and I really enjoyed it. They were not quite, I probably just didn't mix them right. They weren't quite as opaque as I thought that they were going to be when I had originally swatched them. They were actually quite watercolory, not watercolory, they're very watery, like almost like watered down. But that might have been my fault because I was really just pulling um, like small little bits into a small palette. Um, like here, I was just squirting out little bitty bits and that might have watered it down a bit. Um, if I had just squeezed a chunk out into a half pan, I might have had more opaque results because I do like a little bit of opaqueness in my watercolor. But yeah, this was a combination of these watercolors with a bunch of colored pencils. But overall, it was quite a fun experience. I am happy to have this in my collection. One of these days, I may buy, I keep saying this, I'm going to purchase a bunch of little bitty mini, like like half of a half pan watercolor pans. Um, that way I can have more colors in my dominant palette, and I just need to redo my entire watercolor palette. Um, overall, most of these colors, all these colors are very much me. I really enjoyed using them. Very much recommend it. This would be like a good Christmas present if uh, you can get your hands on them. But yeah, that's that's what I did. Those were my results. Had fun. All right, that's it for now. Thank you guys. See y'all the next time. Bye-bye.